Hi, welcome back to another Freelander video on the K-Series engine thermostat, all it needs to know and a much better configuration for stopping overheating. So in this video, I'll try and go over what the original thermostat configuration was like, what the new PRT system is like that Land Rover introduced to um, improve the um, head gasket failure rate due to too much temperature cycling on the engine with it rapidly going hot and cold when it was warming up. And here is a quick glimpse of a newly configured PRT. This is not the usual setup of PRT. And the reason I've got it plumbed in this way, we'll come to later, but it basically fixes a potential failure mechanism where the car can and did overheat when it sat idling for a long time. I'll explain how the PRT works and I'll split one of these open and we can have a glimpse of how they're configured. Here we are, it's a traditional sort of um, thermostat with a shoe on the end. When this opens, this goes over to the right and applies more of a pressure to block the hole at the bottom. And you can see it's got some little um, bleed holes to allow some water to go through. So it's called a PRT, which stands for pressure release thermostat, because this plate and this hole, this hole goes off to the engine water outlet, so where the, the hot water from the engine comes from, goes, tries to go down here, and if there's a lot of pressure, it'll push against this plate and open it up, hence the name pressure release. I think possibly um, it serves two purposes. It relieves pressure on the water pump. So if your engine's going at high revs, the water pump's going at high revs, it allows more water to flow through. If the thermostat is closed, then the water can only go out of this hole, which is uh, the, the bypass connection that goes off and just circulates around the engine. So it doesn't instantly cool the engine down anymore, just um, circulates it at a faster rate. So you can see here it's marked to pump. That's to the water pump, i.e. the inlet side of the engine. Uh, the other thing it does when more hot water is circulating around, then uh, it, if the water's hot enough, it'll open the thermostat. This is the sensing part of the thermostat in here. It's a wax thermostat. And uh, there's two sorts of thermostats. I think something like 82 and 88 degrees centigrade, uh, either a beige or the gray one. So when the water is hot enough, then this plate opens and water is then allowed to come back from the lower part of the radiator, which is this side. And it goes through into the engine, going off to the pump that side. And when this opens, more pressure is applied on this plate, which slows down the flow that comes directly from the engine. So there's less water being bypassed and further up here there's a t-junction so the water from the engine also goes out to the top part of the radiator gets cooled comes back around here goes off to the pump so that's basically how the pressure release thermostat works uh, i always thought pressure release meant it opened up more flow to the radiator at high rev straight away but that's not the way it works it actually opens up more flow just bypassing around the engine and only the thermostat can create more flow from the radiator by opening up. So why do I think this video on the thermostat and in particular the PRT thermostat is important? Um, that's because it can lead to overheating of the engine and some drastic temperature variations of the engine as it's just sitting idle. So on this diagram and pictures of a typical PRT setup, you can see how it is plumbed in. So hopefully you're dying to know, well, how does my engine overheat? I've never really noticed this. And for me, it only very occasionally happened once when the car was sat in the testing station idling and it overheated, started boiling over. And this was even though the fans were going like mad trying to cool it, which actually makes it worse. And I'll describe why in a minute. Second type happened was in traffic. If you blip the throttle, then this problem goes away for about 10 minutes or so but if it's sat idling for about 10 minutes, it can overheat. Um, most of the time you don't know you've got this problem because the temperature gauge in the car will read normal when the engine temperature's from about 60 degrees up to all the way to about 110 degrees centigrade. What you really need is a much more linear temperature gauge, so a temperature gauge. So here's one I've put in 
uh, with a, a separate external sensor, which I've put right next to the hot water outlet pipe from the engine, just as it goes off to the uh, heater pipe, I think that is. And uh, I covered it in some insulation so the air around it doesn't cool it off, so it's actually reading the temperature of the pipe, which is pretty much the temperature of the engine. And that saves drilling any holes in the water system. And then you can see the real temperature of the engine. So let me describe the failure mechanism. A car starts off cold, the radiator is cold. This problem is worse in cold weather, the cold uh, radiator. So you've got a small amount of flow from the engine. This hole you can see is pretty much blocked by the faceplate. Flow is limited by the holes in the plate. As uh, so you get a small amount of hot water going through here, going out, in here, out here, off to the pump, off to the bypass to the pump. So as the engine warms up, Nothing is flowing through the thermostat, nothing's flowing through the radiator. This side of the thermostat, see the thermostat here, is sitting stone cold. This is right on the sensor of the thermostat. You've got a small amount of hot water that's flowing out here and going in there. Now if the cold water is particularly cold, and in particular if there's a tiny little bit of leakage through this seal where the thermostat closes, then the cold water from the radiator will always keep the stat closed, even though there's a small amount of hot water from the engine flowing from the engine back to the bypass. And the engine gets hotter and hotter, and I've seen it go all the way up to 117 degrees centigrade, and the fans will start then going like mad because the temperature sensor on the engine says water's too hot. I'll start winding up the fan speed. Fans are going like mad. Unfortunately, that makes it even worse because that just cools down the PRT thermostat even more, cools down slightly the water coming from this pipe from the engine and um, makes the radiator even cooler if it's a cooler day. So the thermostat remains shut and the engine overheats until you blip the throttle, which is why you don't notice it in normal driving, which creates more flow through the thermostat. You then get a lot more hot water going over the thermostat and it'll then suddenly open because it sees that temperature of 117 degrees. You then get a gush of cold water coming through the radi radiator straight through into the engine and the engine rapidly cools down, which is not good for the engine either, or the head or the head gasket. And uh, it's certainly something you need to fix and need to improve. I would say most of the time you won't even know this is happening. Now, maybe not every car overheats, and probably it's something that's made worse with age. So I suspect uh, Land Rover or Rover were aware of this uh, issue, which is why they put this rubber sealing band around the, uh, the joint on the plate on the thermostat where it opens and closes. Uh, that's, that would normally give you a better seal so the thermostat completely shuts so you wouldn't get any leakage of cold water coming through here. But you can see the rubber with age has wrinkled up a little bit and maybe you've got a small amount of leakage of cold water that's coming through, flows over the wax part of the thermostat, helps to keep it shut. There's no obvious gaps in it. You'd imagine with age that something could very easily happen and I suspect it could even be a little bit of an issue even on a new thermostat. And when I was getting this issue, I actually swapped to a different uh, thermostat from uh, the gray one, this gray one, to the beige one that's down here, which I've got it at the moment. That's the new configuration for it, we'll come to in a minute. But what I saw was the temperature rapidly crashing on the engine from uh, 117 down to uh, I think I saw it like 60 degrees centigrade or something. And then after the next 10 minutes, still idling, it'll then creep all the way up to 117 again. Might be lucky the thermostat might eventually open because the water is so hot, or you might have to blip the throttle to force it to open up. So not a good situation, uh, but something that is fairly easily rectified with a new configuration. And for the solution that's been working perfectly for the last year or so on this turbo 1.8 turbo freelander turbo conversion uh, it's been working perfectly the temperature stays rock solid and uh, never overheats never gets hotter than 100 and a bit at idle around 102 i think is when the fans of the engine start to come on and they only come on very slightly and stays perfectly stable around that 100 degrees centigrade unless the car's moving through the air and then it cools off a little bit more so i've been wanting to share this for a long time because it's a good improvement on a case series petrol engine 
for more details on the exact reconfiguration, I'm going to make you wait till the end. First, we'll go over what the original thermostat was like. So it's positioned on the back of the engine. As you can see here, the end of the pipe that uh, comes around the side of the engine. You can get some additional problems with the thermostat housing. Recently, I had the end of the housing break off, which uh, created a leak. Uh, the leak um, is very close to the water pump and you might mistake it for a leak in the water pump um, or a leak from the head gasket but it's not it's just the housing for the thermostat that uh, caused that leak the other potential problem is you can get rust and holes coming opening up in the steel pipe that runs on the back of the engine so worth checking and replacing as necessary if it's particularly rusty. So to get to the water pump and that pipe, you have to take off the inlet manifold, uh, which is reasonably easy. Uh, you can get to the bottom bolts by building your arm around the uh, back of the engine, getting a long extension bar on a socket. So here I'm just showing, changing the original thermostat housing. And um, to do the PRT conversion, you need to change the inner thermostat to this sort, which has got the inner core broken out of it to allow the free flow of water, because obviously the thermostat has moved into the PRT, so we don't need the original thermostat to be in place. So if you look on the internet, it's fairly well documented that there were temperature variation problems with the original thermostat location, uh, which is why they later changed to the PRT type external thermostat location. And once you've taken out the original thermostat, if you just want to go for the manufacturer standard PRT configuration, this is how it's plumbed in, which then takes us on to the new configuration of PRT. Here's the PRT, it's in that configuration. We reused a lot of the pipes and the T-junction, so the T-junction being on the outlet pipe from the engine. The T-junction is now down there and is on the pipe from the radiator, which is that pipe there, the lower radiator, comes up, hits the T-junction, one connection goes up to the PRT, the other one goes off to the pipe that goes off to the inlet of the water pump. This pipe goes to the top of the radiator, all the way over there, can't see it on this one, but just have to trust me, can ignore that on this turbo conversion, it has an additional pipe that comes from the turbo for water cooling. Reminder again, this is the hot water coming out of the engine. This turns the PRT thermostat into a normal type thermostat, a non-pressure release, because some of the flow is in a backward direction towards what it normally flows. So really the only uh, flow is from the outlet to the radiator. There's very little flow through this bypass back to the pump because the water will be coming out this hole where the plate is and the water will be going out in that direction. So it pushes the plate to be shut all of the time, which is not a problem because we don't really want a lot of water going down the bypass. We like a little, and that's provided by those holes in the plate. So the hot water flows over the thermostat and when the engine is hot, it will open straight away. When the engine's cold, then the only flow you'll get out of here will be off to the heater via this pipe which also cools uh, the IRD as well. So there's always some flow through there and you'll get a little bit of flow through the bypass. So basically up here, out through those small holes in the metal plate and out there on this one, I actually drilled two of the holes to be five mil wide, which makes for a little bit more flow. I'm not sure it's really uh, needed. And that was just uh, done as part of my experimentation to see if I could improve the existing PRT which I couldn't completely, so I went for this configuration. In effect, that is like a normal thermostat on an old style engine, which would normally be sitting on top of the engine in the block. The bottom half would be in the block water and the top would go off to the radiator. So it's very like uh, a normal output style thermostat. So this is the hot water from the engine, it goes off to the radiator. So it behaves exactly like a normal output style thermostat which by the way is the type of thermostat configuration they use when they're racing K-series engines in MGs and the like um, but they normally resort to quite expensive metal housed um, thermostats 
I think they're made by QED or something. But you don't need to spend any money, just reconfigure the pipes, move the T-junction that was up here, down there, cut a few pipes, and uh, I don't know, you might need some spare bits of rubber hose or something, but uh, I didn't uh, spend any money doing this on mine, just for a few bits of spare hose. And as I say, that completely fixed my overheating when idling problem. Uh, you can sit idling all day long and the temperature stays perfectly stable. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found that interesting and hopefully that'll help keep K-series engines on the road for longer with fewer issues of overheating. A bit more of a detailed description about the failure mechanism in the video description section if you're interested. So don't forget to bleed all of the air out of the system. There's your first bleed bolt on the coolant pipe. And there's the second one on the pipe going to the heater. Open those with the engine running until no more air comes out. And while you're at it, why not use some copper fittings and a valve to make draining the radiator easier. Thanks for watching and good luck with your DIY. Bye.